good morning everyone so uh, welcome to the final webinar of life and learning series uh hope all the students are having their moments of inspiration and learning from these sessions today we are honored to have among us a very dynamic and a learned professor dr ashish chandra sir on behalf of jaipur institute of management jaipur i would like to extend a warm welcome to you sir thank you uh, uh professor ashish chandra is a professor of healthcare administration college of business at the university of houston clear lake texas usa where he has served as a department chair over the period over over a period of 4 years all together dr ashish chandra has over 20 years of experience of university level teaching in the united states he is a well recognized healthcare administrative academician internationally and served on the academic advisory board of several educational institution in turkey and india he also had the distinct honor of being the commencement speaker at the 2018 december commencement of the university of houston clear lake in usa so dr ashish chandra is also a prolific researcher and has 75 publication in the field journal three edited books a dozen book chapters and over 250 publications in conference proceedings he is the editor in chief of the journal uh, hospital uh, hospitals uh, of the journal hospital topics which is the oldest journal in healthcare administration field which is almost 290 which is almost into 98 years of its existence he also has served as the president of four major international academic organization that is business and health administration association the association of collegiate of marketing educators the mb AA International and the Federation of Business Disciplines. Professor Chandra has also received numerous awards and recognition related to teaching, research, and service throughout his career, which includes 2017 Excellence in Teaching Award by National Society for Leadership Success, 2015 Outstanding Professor Award given by the University of Houston Clear Lake Alumni Association in 2012. the american college of uh, healthcare executives service award 2011 the outstanding educator award for the association of college of marketing educator and the arvin mac hill distinguished paper award at three di different international conference first of all thank you very much for having me over i am actually always excited to be back at jaipur yeah even if it's virtual yeah i love that place in jaipur dr pankaj is a fantastic very dear friend of mine too so i am always excited to join you all so i appreciate you all even inviting me leader should have a foresight of thinking far ahead of where you are the current time is not what it if you are a good leader covid 19 is what you are looking at right now it's not what you should be of course you are you have to handle that situation covid 19 is something which will go away or at least it will be it there will be some controls over it what do we do after that a good leader is already planning 4 years 5 years down the road as a leader you should start putting the what if what if this happens and that what if scenario is what kind of prompted me to get into different fields so when i got my bachelor's in statistics over there i have Uh, in bhu so i was student bhu so when i got my bachelor's in stats i got my uh, mms over there i got in the computer science but that was a i started doing my research for mba programs in uh, in the us in 1985 when i was not even in the uh, mms program or mba program at uh, bhu by that time i was already doing research for the ones here was uh, the big difference was when i was in the college of science over there that was we didn't have a semester system it was an annual exam that was one big difference so and the bachelor's degree was 3 years you take bachelor's degree uh, the bs first year bs second year bs third year is your honors subject in which you specialize basically what you call right now it's your honors subject but it's an annual exam it is not every semester or every quarter so if you pass or you fail it's a one year deal over there at one shot Uh, then uh, nowadays what the way it has started to become more is a semester wise 
in fact more of trimester sir from semester the what? To, so like nowadays most of semester are shifting to a trimester system sir a oh, trimester system okay so that way you get one big break also in the middle uh another big difference is that there was less emphasis on things like fellowships and internships and practical training at that time it was more what is taught in the classroom and what is uh, basically book and all that thing and you go and you take an exam and at the end of the year that will make decide your fate that's how it was um i'm not sure if you all grade based on percentage yeah but that time it was based on percentage so uh, it was not based on a b c d grade so that that may be a change if you all are going through that that was a change for me also over here when i came in india it was all percentage based but when you come to the us it was based on the the a b c d e uh, a b c d f that grading makes sense but it is that the first project that i did related to healthcare management was while i was still in my bhu statistics program i did two projects at that time and that was in 1986 and those project or 85 86 is when i did that project and it was related to patient satisfaction in hospital and bhu hospital is where we collected the data and all and uh, there were seven of us or uh, been six of our core group of friends who did that over there and uh, another one was that patient caregivers if you look at it in in indian hospitals most of the times if you go to a hospital uh, right now they are much more sophisticated at that time it was a general ward most of the time you have 50 beds in there and every bed you will find their family members over there but did anybody find look into the perceptions of those individuals at all what are the perceptions of the family members this is a, again going back to what i do right now and i th- when i think about it say, these are the types of articles i am looking at right now in my journals and all that thing too but i was already doing it 30 odd years ago and that's when it what i wanted to find out is that what was the perception of the patients if the patients were able to respond to it or there was a surrogate who responded on behalf of the patient and then there was another survey which was basically collecting data from the caregivers or the loved ones who were sitting or family friends whoever were with the patient all right you all can see this perfect sir okay so this is where my educational journey started if you look at it bhu is where my leader uh, my educational journey started banaras hindu university um, some of the students may not be aware of it and uh, even though you think that they may be aware of it they, uh, i was surprised to find out many are not banaras hindu university is in varanasi so in banaras my bachelor's degree of course on the right top you will see is uh, from my major was statistics that was the stats department a uh, picture even looks like somebody took it when i was going there at that time there is a maruti over there career as a faculty started out at the xavier university of louisiana in new orleans many people know new orleans because it's new orleans so that's all i can say and most of the james bond movie james bond loves new orleans by the way somehow he ends up over there so i was there for four years uh actually that is the building in which my office was my office was right over here as an assistant professor i started there then after that i went to marshall university in west virginia most of the folks don't know about marshall university but i bet a lot of people know who matthew mcconaughey is Oh, what's his name? Matthew McConaughey, right? This guy. On, I can't see this. It's blocking my screen. Let me reduce this. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey. You see that? Yes, sir. B. R. Marshall. If you have seen, that movie, was based in Houston, Texas, as the chair of the department. That's a leadership role. I left an institution to become a leader of a healthcare administration department over here. So I moved from a, a state of 1.8 million 
to a metro area, city in the metro area of 5.5 million. The population of the Houston metro area is three times the population of the whole state of West Virginia. And uh, Houston NASA was recently in a lot of news after the SpaceX rocket launch and all that thing. And the moment the astronauts landed, they all came back to Houston. They, the families live in Houston. They are all over here. I mean, uh, in fact, University of Houston Clear Lake has one of the biggest distinctions as compared to other universities it has is that we have about 10 or 12 graduates. Space shuttle is, used to be transported when it landed in California. This is the only exhibit of its type in the world where they, that, uh, the space shuttle on top is just a model that they had in uh, Florida Kennedy Space Center. But that 747 plane that you see is the actual plane which used to shuttle that thing. That's the actual NASA plane. So when the space shuttle mission was retired, uh, the whole mission, uh, the space shuttle launches were retired. They brought this airplane, they cut it up into pieces, they brought it back over here to space, uh, that uh, space center. NASA being one of the biggest employers and leading employers of Houston, uh, the other employer is, of course, the tech, uh, the oil industry. Uh, Houston is known as the oil capital. Of, and again, the bigger one on this side, this is, I, I believe, this whole building is MD Anderson Cancer Center, which is world-renowned, perhaps the best cancer center in the world. So healthcare is obviously one of the biggest things over here. And leadership roles are very important over here for patient care nowadays. If you are not a good leader, then you are in the wrong business because healthcare is very dynamic and very fast paced. And that coming up later on too. And this is a little bit too much mumbo jumbo, let's say. Okay. Here it is. This is something for the students to think about. I should have put that as a poll over there. Can, you, can somebody put this as a poll right now? Ask if it takes too long. Think about this thing. What kind of person are you? Are you a reactive person? Something happens and you take action as needed? Or are you a proactive person who anticip anticipates what, what actions may be needed? Think about it. Managers are the ones who are reactive. But if you want to be a leader, Leaders are the one who are proactive. Leaders are the one who actually anticipate what may be happening. Managers are the ones where they will be delegating. So you are in a management program. You can decide what ladder you want to go on. You want to go on the manager ladder or you want to go on a leader's ladder. You got, let's see how many we have on over here. Hey, different types of leaders what we can have. There are some which are lack of a better term, windbags. You see the one in the bottom center? They just love to talk, 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 talk. When it comes to action, they are the first ones to blame others. We see that in some politics also. No names mentioned, but we have seen that in politics too. It's never their fault. It's somebody else's fault. Leaders should be the ones who should be willing to take risks. Yeah, they can, they are taking a risk, but it's not, they should not be always taking the risk for a reward. Reward is, if it happens, it happens. It, Go back to Gita. Gita will explain to you. Why. And all that thing, like a cheery cheerleaders. I can tell you what, I'm not a very, I, mean, I can be all of these things over here. And yes, I'm a windbag also sometimes. I can just talk, 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 talk. There is sometimes there's just so much talk over there. In fact, I had to, I gave one presentation after that. I had to ask, what the heck did I talk about? Because I didn't even remember what I talked about. So we all do these things. 
being a parrot can be sometimes in a situation where you have to make certain uh, calls for the from a legal perspective as well like uh, our strategies whoever uh, i talked to last kind of deal is the parrot parrot repeats that thing that's a basically instruction given upon you and you follow and that's what you remember what happened before that you really don't remember you just remember that last part so you just have to figure out which one do you want to be oh by the way drill sergeants people don't like that part yeah because they sometimes they, they don't like it guess what i'm a drill sergeant too i can i've done that too sometimes it it is required so when you start looking about the kind of leader you want to be this these are some things be the kind of leader you want your leaders to be don't try to imitate others everybody is an individual entity you all should behave like yourself i have seen people go for an interview and they suddenly start acting like they are somebody else because they saw a ceo act like that well guess what as an interviewer uh, interviewee and person i'm interviewing i will know it Pe pe people figure it out if you are making it up it is very easy to gauge who you are not be be yourself okay if i wanted to hire the other one i would have invited the other one but i invited you so you be yourself leadership is that you should have the capacity to agree to disagree it's not like if you disagree your head is gone you can't do that way don't be afraid to ask help from your teachers and your mentors your mentors may or may not be your teachers but your teachers definitely can be your supporters in your entity not your in your company it's somewhere else even a different city find a friend make a friend during a flight or something like that you found somebody because sometimes you just need to decompress and you just want to get it off your chest certain things and they may look at it from a different perspective and they can tell you that i have issues like that i call people my friends all over the world and i'm very fortunate i have dr pankaj over there i call every now and then if i have any issues too because uh, we can it's if he was working at my institution here i don't think i can ask him some questions i did when i you know, which i can ask him over there so I always recommend that find somebody and you should trust them and i trust him so you should trust them too trust is not instant trust takes time folks just by looking at it and by the way for me the way i tell my students is that i trust my students it's up to them they break that trust i just don't forget it be willing to take up on new challenges so now that you have seen my journey go back and gauge how many new challenges i took up on myself throughout my journey at that time i was not even thinking like that we didn't have zoom presentations or anything like that we didn't have sessions like these so you need to think about it that what challenges are you willing to take if you're not willing to take a challenge you may be in the wrong field management may not be the right thing for you you all are you have to interact with people folks this is a people business you have to negotiate with people you have to work with people you have to lead people and you have to be led by others too so just before you all go too far in the game just don't waste your parents money or your own listen to the people who know about the subject in this politicians are not the ones researchers are the one health professionals are the one politicians should be the ones who should listen to the advice of these health professionals and be the spokesperson at that time that's a big role a politician can do over there 
when politicians start saying that oh, I'm not wearing a mask and all that thing, whereas the health professionals are saying that no, you shouldn't be wearing it because there is a significant advantage to these things. You all are very young. Young generation, yes, you have the age, of course, but you are not immune to this thing. COVID-19 is dangerous, very dangerous. And now that you, Randy is not the first one in my family, let's call it, he's like a family to me. In fact, uh, Randy's mother is at my house right now. She's upstairs, so we brought her over here. And, uh, but he's like family. My sister and brother-in-law, they had COVID. I had another brother in law because she is a surgeon. She got in the hospital in Atlanta. And so she, of course, she was in the front lines. It was a matter of time when she was going to end up having it. And the brother-in-law was, of course, he's staying in, going to be protected. He's very fit. By the way, remember we and I said that, have fun. We have fun. I, I told him, pose like that. And he posed like that. That was actually in Warne Mundi, this picture in Germany, which is near Rostock in Germany. This is uh, Poland, in Gdynia, Poland. Randy always goes with me whenever we go on the conference cruises. This is when we were on a conference cruise for the Baltics. That is a Polish Navy boat and all that things we are walking on. This is on board the cruise ship. And you can see all of us became like a big part of the family. Look at all these pictures. We are having fun. In fact, Randy even went out of his comfort zone. So the Alaska cruise, what happened is that uh, they asked for volunteers on the stage. They have some activities. Don't be afraid to volunteer. He got up for volunteer. This is a hypnotist, by the way. That lady in black dress over here, that's a hypnotist. And she had hypnotized. That's my sister in the blue jacket over here. She did not get hypnotized. Oh, Randy was so hypnotized. He was completely out of it. So his, he was hypnotized and Randy had to assume that he is a Martian. So he was asked to sing the Martian national anthem. There you go. Can you hear it? No? All right, let me see. I may have to do the audio. <laughs> See, he was completely hypnotized. He has no recollection of all these things happening to him. He was actually on the stage for more than an hour. All he remembers is like, oh, I don't know. how many of you will get up and say, you know what, let's get on the stage. They're asking for volunteer. Many people will just say, no, no, you go ahead. You go ahead and try to push somebody or um, not me, but you go ahead. Well, why would you push somebody else if you're not willing to do it yourself? If you want to be a leader, then you go first before you tell somebody else to do it. Life is short. Make most of it. Think about others as well. Like I said, don't forget to have fun and work on being known for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons. Thank you. That's it. Thing. You can never pay attention to every detail. You have to prioritize which battle is the one you need to tackle. You fight the battle, that is the easiest one to win at that time in healthcare too. If COVID-19, this scenario right now, the big, there are all kinds of medications coming out, all kinds of different uh, health professionals are making this ridiculous statements and all that. We got stupid people living in Houston too who make statements which should, they should not be making in public. Uh, but 
do you need to follow them or do you need to follow a person who really has some credibility and has done some, done some work on it you have to figure about research is the moment you do your research you become and uh, you get your paper published you become your own biggest critic of that paper and whenever my paper comes out i always think what was i thinking when i wrote that thing but when i wrote that thing i was thinking this is the best thing since sliced bread so there is a time when you have to just when you hand it over to somebody you just hand it over and trust the others because they may be seeing something in it that you may not be able to see it there is no research which is an absolutely be all end all every research project there are limitations to it there are new dimensions to it that people could have done what if scenarios so that's one thing about my research that i have seen that i can say that uh, there were a few things i did that uh, i wish i had collected more samples in this research project that you are interested in don't do a research project that i am interested in if you do not have any interest in it when if i hire you to work on it, that's a different story you have been hired to work on it but don't do it because uh, you are just being dictated you could do it when if you have interest in that project if you have some passion towards that topic that's when you will work on it and you look at all dimensions as many dimensions as you can look at it look at it from inside and look at from the outside perspective what are the others going to be asking for in this research this is what i'm asking what are others going to be looking in several situations which are very difficult i don't have the answer to everything those are the situations that's when your network your group is very network group is very important people if your ego is coming in the way that oh i'm too uh, i don't want my, uh, to hurt somebody else's feeling and, and i don't want my feelings to be hurt ah, forget about that of houston houston is one of the most if not the most diverse city in the country which i find here much different from india is that uh, you get in the workforce at the early in your age you don't know my son he's 20 he just turned 20 you are just today he turned 25 days ago so my son is 20 and he works at a dog just a small dog boarding shelter place over here a pet boarding place no job is a small job it's a job just think about that i always tell a person that is uh, if you want to see, be a ceo then you should be the one who should, uh, you should have the traits of being willing to do anything that is required your personality is a part of your profession your personality becomes your professional pr- uh, behavior too and you don't don't hide your emotions folks don't have to option to the changing scenarios that is one thing you will see uh you will also see that many of the entities were their long term goals were 6 months down the road now the long term you are looking at you should have a plan for what is going to happen 5 years down the road what ifs so any entities had not even planned like looking at uh, prioritizing the jobs and uh, redefining some jobs which can be done remotely you will also notice that a lot of the meetings which required people to travel will happen remotely people's travel habits will change particularly a lot of the recruiters are asking right now whenever they ask me uh, for the stu- uh, for potential students as well they want to see an individual who is a team player who is good in communication written and oral communication both and that's why the research is very important build your skills as much as possible right now it's diversifying don't just go with one skill if you are just just being a marketer is not going to cut you have to see what you have to do but don't say that, oh yeah this is what the minimum is what will they do fire me they can't fire me i'm doing the what's required that's not how it works anymore folks you have to do much more than the minimum
you have to make yourself very much. on the behalf of chapter institute of management and the student actors extend a very hearty uh, vote of thanks to the our honorable uh, guest speaker who blessed us with his presence and took part and took out some valuable time of his busy schedule so thank you sir for your presence and uh, with this i must mention our deep sense of appreciation for such an inspiring session thank you sir